good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Anil Dote. And uh, today uh, I will talk about Hall effect measurement. Uh, that is not going well. Let me just minimize. Okay. So outline of the talk is like first, I will just give the introduction for classical Hall effect and uh, quantum Hall effect, anomalous Hall effect. Then I will describe uh, what kind of Hall measurement system we have, and then some applications. So this Hall effect is uh, located in the Cook Hall clean room, uh, which is a small clean room with class 100 and 1000 space. And this provides some microfabrication and thin film processing abilities. Uh, we have some instruments for lithography, thin film deposition, characterization, processing, packaging, etc. Uh, so what is Hall effect? So when the combination of magnetic field and flowing current in a material produce a new voltage, it is called Hall effect. So consider this sample with thickness T and width W. Magnetic field is applied perpendicular to the sample and current is flowing from left to right, I X. Uh, in this example, consider a charge carrier, which is electron here. So in a magnetic field, it will experience um, a, a Lorentz force given by EVXB which is Vx is uh, drift velocity. So this charge, this Lorentz force will push this charge along these curved lines uh, uh, at the edges. So, so electrons will start building up at this, uh, at this edge. So relatively, you will have a positive charge build up on the other side of the edge. So this charge build up at the edges uh, creates the Hall voltage given by VH across the width of the material. So when the force, so this is an electric force uh, in this direction. So when the electric force uh, matches, balances exactly the Lorentz force, the electrons will be no more deflected like this. They will just pass through. And this um, uh, Hall voltage is given as, um, IB over TNE, where N is a carrier density. So this Hall voltage can be negative or positive. If it is negative, the, then carriers are P-type, uh, um, uh, carriers are uh, electrons. If, if it is positive, the carriers are holes. Okay, so, <clears throat> so now let us consider the, this Hall effect in a two-dimensional electron system. But before that, let's look at the classical picture here. Like we have the same sample in 3D, uh, where Hall voltage is this. So Hall resistivity will be uh, proportional to magnetic field B. So if we have to increase the magnetic field B, we will expect the Hall resistance will increase linearly. So let's say this is a uh, uh, transverse resistivity, PXXY, and uh, PXS will be the, I didn't draw it here, but PXS will be the uh, longitudinal resistivity. So this is what we will expect, but in a two time, so but instead we get this. So this, you see the PXY, uh, the blue the blue graph, it exhibit the steps like this. And the red plot will be for the longitudinal resistivity. Uh, it is going through the oscillations. Uh, so quantum Hall effect is the quantization of Hall resistance exhibited by two dimensional electron system at low temperature and strong magnetic field that is defined by electron charge E and Planck's constant, where mu is an integer or fraction. If mu is integer, it's called integer quantum Hall effect. And if it is a fraction, 
it's a fractional uh, Hall effect. So see the comparison, like we get different results. So what is happening here? Uh, why these resist resistivities are behaving uh, different? Uh, so in order to understand that, let us little bit discuss about Landau quantization. Consider a, a electron in a uniform magnetic field moving with velocity v. It will have it will form the um, cyclotron orbit. And this uh, with radius r proportional to, inversely proportional to magnetic field b. And these uh, cyclotron orbits of these charged particles uh, are quantized. And the quantization of these uh, orbits uh, in a uniform magnetic field is called Landau quantization. So as a result, the charged particles can only occupy orbits with discrete equidistant energy values. And these levels are called Landau, uh, Landau levels. So for example, in a zero magnetic field, this is the um, distribution for energy states. Uh, when the magnetic field is applied, this will form the, uh, this will form uh, Landau levels. And these levels are degenerate with the number of electrons per level uh, proportional to the magnetic field. So we know resistivity from the previous slide is given by this. Uh, so mu is density of electrons over G, Landau degeneracy, which is total number of Landau states. So in simple, simply if we want to call mu is number of occupied Landau levels. So as, mag, uh, as magnetic field, if we increase the magnetic field, the degeneracy will also increase because it's proportional to B and mu will decrease. So, okay, so let's go back to the previous slide. Oh, uh, the next slide. So, so here I have distribution of energy states. Uh, this is the density of states along this and Y axis the energy. This is for me level here. So this is an animated plot. So I'm going to just play it and see what happens. Um, so on the right side, you can see the corresponding resistivity, um, uh, longitudinal and transverse resistivity. So if you notice that these Landau levels are spreading out with, with the increasing magnetic field, right? So if you, so if if it is on the plateau here, when the uh, Fermi energy is in between these two Landau levels, the Landau uh, level will produce one dimensional electric current, a, a kind of channel, and that is called edge states. And each state can transport electrons without dissipation and produce conductivity. And if you look at, and also at the Landau levels are filled here. Um, so the, uh, that's why there is uh, no energy states available for this uh, electron to scatter into. So they can only do the skipping orbit at the edges. So for example, these, these electrons at the edges cannot complete the uh, complete cyclotron orbit. So they will just skip and form the edge state there. So, and at the, if you look at the, like the, at the jump here, like when the resistivities are uh, jumping up, Landau levels are partially filled. So there are more energy states available for, for electron, so they can scatter into random direction and there will be a dissipation. So that's why we see uh, this resistivity increases in both cases. Also, we now saw that um, degeneracy will be higher if we increase the magnetic field. So there will be more number of energy states available here in this Landau levels, and that is possible. And then elect electrons can jump into lower levels. So more for more uh, magnetic field, there will be more states. And that's why at every steps, you can see this, um, you can see these steps are getting higher and higher. 
for each passing of Landau levels. Okay. Now, let's go to the next slide. So, basically, when EF is between the Landau levels, we saw that it will produce one dimensional channel, uh, electrical channel. Uh, the resistivity is given by H over V square. And this is accurate to the one billion, uh, one part in a billion. So if you consider the points at this line, uh, basically those points will have the same value up to the accuracy of one part in a billion. So you can imagine um, this is the stratus line ever see, seen. So because of its accuracy, this is used as a resistance standard. And that value is given by this. And that it is also called a uh, Klitzing constant. And this uh, quantum halipate was reported in like, you know, graphene, gallium arsenide heterostructures and zinc oxides, magnesium zinc oxides. Okay, so what is anomalous effect? Um, so in addition to ordinary Hall effect, which we see in semiconductors and metals, there is an additional voltage proportional to magnetization in a magnetic materials. And that is called anomalous Hall effect. So let's say this, this, is, a, uh, this is a sample with uh, some dimensions and current is flowing from left to right. The magnetic field B makes an angle of alpha with the normal to the sample and theta is the angle between the magnetization because of the magnetic field due to in a pair of uh, magnetic materials and phi is the angle between the current and the uh, and the in plane component of this uh, magnetization so so if one has to measure the hall effect uh, in this system so there will be a three voltage components here the first component is due to ordinary Hall effect, and which we, uh, we have seen before, it is basically due to Lorentz force acting on conduction electrons. And this depends on the Z component of uh, magnetic field, produces an electric field uh, perpendicular to BZ and the current. And this affects all conduction electrons. So whether it is spin polarized or unpolarized. The second term, middle term here, is uh, analogous Hall effect, which is due to magnetic moments um, uh, of a localized electrons. And it depends on Z component of M and the current. Uh, and, uh, and produces an electric field, again, perpendicular to MZ and uh, uh, Z component of, uh, com component of magnetization. And this one also affects all conduction electrons. So next third term is called the planar Hall effect, or uh, also called anisotropic magnetoresistance. And this is also due to magnetic moments of localized electrons. And this uh, pH is proportional to the square of this um, planar component of uh, magnetization. But this one affects only spin polarized conduction electrons. So this effect can also be applied to measure uh, ma uh, magnetic hysteresis, hysteresis loops in a perpendicular magnetic uh, recording media, and also in ferromagnetic semi semiconductor heterostructures and diluted magnetic semiconductors. So, and basically the origin of this, just to explain is it, it is because of the, uh, spin orbit interaction, uh, magnetic interaction uh, of a steady delocalized uh, D electron uh, in a mo and the moving uh, conduction electrons, because those electrons are also uh, rotating around the um, other atoms while, 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 while moving along the lattice. And this also, the, the scattering probability uh, uh, creates the Hall current, and that depends upon which direction the electron is uh, uh, moving. And in planar Hall effect, it depends upon the uh, 
mutual spin directions. Uh, but this is only for the spin, uh, uh, only for the spin polarized electrons. Okay, so we have a Hall effect system from lecture, and this is able to do um, direct and derived measurements as a function of field and temperature. Uh, so it can measure Hall voltage, a resistivity, high curves. And it, and it can calculate uh, Hall coefficient, carrier type, uh, P type or N type, it can tell, and uh, carrier density, Hall mobility, and magneto resistance. Um, mobilities uh, can be measured up to like 10 power 6. And resistance ranges like half a milliohm to 10 mega ohms. It has a closed cycle refrigerator. Uh, which can bring it down to uh, temperature to like 15 Kelvin. And DC fields can be applied up to one Tesla here. Uh, also sample rotation orientation is possible here. Uh, uh, if it's a mag this is a magnetic field at the plane of the sample, it can be rotated uh, along this axis. So you can have any orientation possible. And measurement accessory consists of electromagnet, which can apply precise magnetic field. Then there is a nano hold meter, uh, current source, and temperature controller. Uh, sample is mounted on the sample card uh, with the four contacts at four corners. And this card is then uh, mounted in this chamber, a sample chamber. And some applications for Hall measurement can be applied to several materials like transparent uh, conducting oxides, 3-5 semiconductors, uh, high electron mobility transistors, 2-5 semiconductors, elemental semiconductors, dilute magnetic semiconductors, and other organic and in inorganic conductors. It can also be used for a solar cell and organic electronics. A measurement setup basically includes the quality check for these samples and measure the resistivity and the Hall voltage. The user interface looks like this, uh, where you can enter a magnetic field uh, and also uh, specify what temperature you want to do measurement. And there are several other parameters. Uh, two geometries you can do in this system. One is standard Van der Waal, uh, with four uh, contacts at four corners and other one is the Hall bar. Uh, it will generate the results um, for Hall measurement and IV cores. It can also plot carrier concentration, mobility and resistivity as a function of temperature. Then some applications of Hall sensors are for as a, like it can be used as a proximity sensing, uh, current sensing uh, in automotive industries like fuel level indicator, uh, speed tachometers, uh, anti-lock braking systems. Uh, calibrated Hall probes can be used to measure the uh, magnetic field. Uh, sensors can be used for keyboard switches. And there are recently a so on paper uh, for uh, biological and chemical Hall sensors there. Basically, they're, they're labeling biomolecule with the magnetic nanoparticles for detection. And for a quantum Hall effect, that can be used for graphene-based sensors and laser, and maybe in future for quantum computation. Okay, so that ends my talk, so thank you.